And uh, let's head out uh, to our guest line and welcome Ed Smith. He's the host of the Believe in Cardinals podcast on the Believe Network. He's a former NFL player. He played in the 98 Super Bowl, and he's the uncle of NFL Bengals tight end Irv Smith Jr. Thank you so much for joining us, Ed. Hey, appreciate you gentlemen having me, man. No problem, no problem. Um, So we have a new coach in Arizona, and I know it's only been three games, but what would you say uh, they're trying to implement in Arizona? What kind of team do they want to be? Well, you know, it's interesting. We're still trying to figure that out here. Um, You know, as far as, you know, game planning and stuff like that, I'm not sure if we've seen the, you know, the the overall blueprint, uh, but... What I like more than anything is, and I hate to use the word, he's developing a, a culture here, uh, which, you know, we're trying to get out of that stain of, you know, we've been a kind of a bottom a team, you know, over the last year or so, everybody almost the butt of a bunch of jokes, but he's kind of turning things around with the attitude of these players. And even some of us who are covering the team, we thought they would be probably every week of the beat down of the week, everybody looking forward to having them on their schedule. And so far in three weeks, they've been in every game and they've actually surprised everybody, shocked the world by beating the Cowboys. So if nothing else, they're building something that, you know, taking away that laughing stock, laughing stock kind of uh, uh, moniker that we've been walking around with all off season. Everybody was thinking we're going to be tanking. and But you know, so far it looks like they're handling their business and surprising a bunch of people, you know? Yeah, Ed, no doubt about it, because I'm going to be honest, I left you guys for dead. I thought this was about Kyler Murray, you know, him not playing and him getting the contract, him not, pop, you know, allegedly not studying. I, do you think, uh, how much credit does Kingsbury get for the fact that you guys, you're right, you upset Dallas and you've been in three tough games and could have won all three? Yeah, if nothing else, this shows us that, you know, and, and you know, I'm, I, from the very beginning, I doubted Kingsbury's credentials mm. and the fact that he should have been a head coach. I think he's more of a coordinator. And he showed that over his tenure here. And each year that passed, you know, obviously you saw the relationship he had with Kyler Murray. That was deteriorating. And in some people's mind, that was the only reason he was here in the first place. So if that wasn't going to work, you know, what the heck was he doing here? Then you see Gannon come in. And along with that, uh, Steve Kime had to take some blame because you see what Austin Ford has done in terms of, in terms of kind of reshaping the roster, getting some of the, the, the people in here, players in here that are going to, you know, give us everything they've got. And, you know, that I think this, the, the reason, the fact that the Cardinals are showing on the field is, um, you know, shows us that Kime and Kingsbury should take a little blame for leaving, you know, for, for getting the organization in the position that they did. And on the flip side, you got to give Austin Fort and Gannon some credit or I would say a quick turnaround, but at least making us where we're not a laughing stock uh, amongst others in the league. Yeah, good stuff. Ed Smith joining us on 95.7 The Game. He's the host of Believe in Cardinals uh, on the Believe Network, uh, former NFL player, played in the 98 Super Bowl. And um, let me, let me, you played the tight end position, so let me get your opinion of uh, George Kittle. Man, I love George for so many reasons. I love the fact that he represents the tight end and the uniqueness of the position and his skill set is off the chart. He's a good blocker, great receiver. I love the yak after he catches passes. Then the thing I love the most, I'd have to say, is his personality. You know, the tight end position is so hard to play because you have to do so many different things. And sometimes I used to explain it, tight end is like the redhead stepchild of the of the team in some instances. You know, you got to be able to do so many things, but you get so little respect. And I think the fact that he's doing this thing and they've got like tight end you and different things that they've kind of, you know, kind of generated, bringing some light to the position. I said, I love him. And the fact that my nephew plays the position, you know, bringing it all in the family. Uh, and I love George even more, man. He's, he's top on one of the tops of the position on my list. And one of the reasons I love sports is we never know what's going to happen. And we had brought up, I did, Kyler Murray a couple seconds ago. He was drafted number one in the 2019 draft. And I think it's fair to say, you know, there's a little turbulence. And out here, Brock Purdy, because two quarterbacks before him get injured, the last pick in the draft, and now he's balling out. You played the game. Can you share with us where you're at 
uh, with Brock Purdy because some, you know, fans, it's too soon. He's in a good you know, situation, I don't care about any of that. I feel like he's bringing a lot to the table. Where are you at, Ed, uh, on Brock Purdy? Brock Purdy has won me over. And I keep, you know, it's funny. Every week he does what he's supposed to do, but because he doesn't do a flashy, and you know, everybody's waiting for the table to fall from underneath him. And I keep telling my radio partner, like, every week we come back, like, you know, at the start of the season, you know, it was all this doubt because, of the, you know, he only did it in that short sample last year. And then he comes coming off the injury. And now we're three games in. And every week I look at my partner. I'm like, what does Brock have to do to win you over? They, you know, got to go 17-0. You know, so I'm winning, even winning over my partner because to do what he's doing is not easy. One, you know, taking over an organization as a, as a Mr. Irrelevant, you got to win the respect of those guys in the locker room. Those guys are at this point, from what I can see, a ride or die with Brock. He is their man. So regardless of what fans think, he's won that group over, and all he has to do is continue to – because here's the thing. He's not going to win every single game. Everybody's waiting for that one game where he might lay an egg, and then they can start, oh, see, Rock Purdy, he's not – nah, every quarterback has that one game. I don't even – he could have a couple of those in the season, but what he's done for me has won me over, uh, not just his play on the field, but how he carries himself and – you know, I come from that mindset too, you know, because, you know, I didn't get a start in the league till I was nine years after my minor league baseball career. People doubted the fact that I was even there. And, and you know, so I appreciated it even more every day I had in the league. And I'm sure Brock does as well because he was a seven-round pick and doubted so much. So his humility has won me over. His play has won me over. I'm just hoping he continues to do what he does. And uh, people finally give him his just due when it's all said and done. Uh, Ed Smith joining us on 95.7 The Game, former NFL uh, tight end. Ed, you were uh, on the the team that went to the Super Bowl in Atlanta uh, in 1998, and you guys went 14-2 and that year. The the San Francisco 49ers believe that they have a they have a championship team and they that they can they can run this table and get to the Super Bowl. What do you remember about that regular season? Um, in terms of adversity and maybe things you had to overcome on the way to getting to the Super Bowl, how tough was it? Well, the year before we were, we started off the season ninety-seven, one and seven, and we finished respectively at seven and nine. Right. Almost, you know, finished off the seven and one second half of the season. What I remember about that following season is we were an afterthought. Nobody thought we were uh, even going to compete for our division, let alone you know the conference. And what happened was we just started building confidence within our building, forgetting what everybody else thought around the league. And, you know, it was one of those things like a magical ride. One thing turned to the next, you know, because, you know, 14 wins is amazing. Uh, And, you know, we were just clipping them off one at a time. Coach Reeves, you know, kept us grounded along the way. And, you know, even when we got to the playoffs, we had to play with my brother was actually in San Fran that year. You guys played – uh, the Green Bay and the wild card came over to us. Uh, we, you know, everybody still thought San Fran was the cream of the crop. We beat them, go to Minnesota, 11 point dog on the road, win that game. It was, for me, what I remember the most is being doubted all the way through. And we just had confidence in ourselves and kept clipping off those wins. Eventually found ourselves in the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, didn't finish it off. But you talk about a magical ride. It was something that I'll never forget being a part of. And, you know, just a part of a great, uh, you know, even if it was just a single season run, it was so magical. And I love the guys, love Coach Reeves, you know, sorry that he, you know, still sorry that he has not been put in the Hall of Fame yet, but he deserves that. And he obviously passed, uh, recently passed, but that man means so much to me because of how he ran that team. Good stuff. And I hate to do this to you because my partner's calling me soft. But uh, we've seen some injuries, starting with Aaron Rodgers, Diggs, Chubb, and the Niners had a blowout win convincingly in Pittsburgh, and Kyle kind of played the guys to it, to the end of the, you know, the fourth quarter. And I was like, you got to be careful. And then I'm watching Dan Campbell last night. They, they had the game in hand, but he's playing his troops to the end. You played the game. Do I sound soft just as a spectator saying, you know what, man, look at the scoreboard and live, uh, you know, to another game? Or is that SOFT coming from me or anybody else that thinks that way? It's not soft. I think the thing 
that might be clouding your vision is those rosters are so small and, you know, they're clipped down to 47 players on game day. So it's not like college where you have three and four deep at each position. And when you're talking about, like, even with your offensive line, you know, those are positions you're not subbing guys in just to sub them in. If you don't have your quarterback out there, you want those guys playing. Um, you know, I, I think, like, for instance, the, the game against Miami and Denver last week, that's when you can get guys out of there. But when games are close, within reach, one single play can flip everything. And we saw Detroit um, or let, almost let Green Bay climb back into that game. So, you know, it's one thing if it's a real blowout. But when they're still relatively close, I think yeah, you keep your troops out there. And most quarterbacks don't want to come off the field anyway. I remember uh, back in the day, um, even um, it was my man in, uh, 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 with the Colts, uh, he um, – Hey, man, he never wanted to, you know, give up even one snap. So, you know, those guys like to play. I, I would think in blow, pure blowouts, you want to get the troops off the field. But for the most part, I think they handled it well. Hey, Ed, thank you so much for joining us. Really good information, appreciate and uh, we appreciate it greatly. Anytime, gentlemen. You guys have a great uh, week, and good luck uh, with the game, man. Thank you. It should, be a, should be a good one, or hopefully it is. Uh, Ed Smith, he's a former... NFL tight end, played in the 98 Super Bowl with the Atlanta Falcons, and he's the host of Believe in Cardinals on the Believe Network.